Guys, let's show you what a DNA extraction looks like using strawberries. Here's some real life strawberries that we're going to extract the DNA out of using this procedure. So, what do you need in order to do this? You're going to need the, the following things. Check to make sure you have them. You will need two plastic bags. You're going to need strawberries, of course. You're going to need a cup for measuring your soapy solution. You're going to need a cup for measuring out your alcohol. You're going to need a spoon, some cheesecloth, and then you're going to need salt in some form or another, preferably non-iodized. And you're either going to mix your own or receive a pre-mixed sample of soapy water so that you can get started the process. In this particular example, example I have the soapy water pre-mixed. If it's not pre-mixed, you're going to need to follow the directions to mix it yourself. So let's get started. First things first is you need to get the appropriate amount of water, which means if it's pre-mixed, this soapy water, you're going to fill it up until this line. If it's not super, super right on, that's fine, as long as it's reasonably close. Now, for obvious reasons, it's difficult to show you, but I suppose I could do that to show you it's reasonably close. All right, a little bit of soap bubbles is unavoidable, though avoid pouring too hard and making excessive soap bubbles. That can throw your experiment off. Anyway, that is your first step. You need to get the appropriate amount of soapy water, and then to that you're going to add a quarter spoonful of salt. quarter spoonful looks approximately like that, and that'll do. What you then want to do is make sure that salt is mixed because at the moment it is not. So you want to make sure that it is going to be evenly mixed with the water, and you do so by simply swirling it like this. Not too hard, you're going to get a soapy, foamy mess, but if you swirl it uh, decently enough, it will dissolve on its own, particularly since it's going to be sitting for a little bit until you get to the next step. So give it a swirl for a bit. All right, we'll set this aside. Now it's time to get the strawberries into your bags. You need to use these in order to mash these up. You won't get any DNA if you don't mash these up first. So it's time to get the strawberries into the bags. Okay, here we go. Got one strawberry, got two strawberries. It's okay if a little juice is left behind. There's going to be plenty of DNA in there. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. They're a little warm because I had to unfreeze these frozen strawberries using the microwave. But nonetheless, what you want to do is make sure to get as much air out as possible. So I'm squeezing the air out of the bag. You would want to do the same. And then once you got the air out, seal it, and then we're going to get one bag inside of the other. You're going to want to do the same. This is just protection in case it breaks. This also just ensures more toughness. And then once you've done that, it's time to break up the strawberry. So it's time to break, break, break. Just give it a good mushing for about a minute or so and that will allow you to really make sure you get all the pieces broken up yes you might wind up with the strawberry being pretty spread out like this but that's okay when you add the soap solution it'll all come back together so just mush 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 for a good minute all right well that's been about a minute now again it's not that big a deal the strawberry's kind of spread out though i can certainly kind of push it back toward a corner and it doesn't hurt but it's time to add the soapy water solution and so what that means is opening both bags and getting our soapy water solution in there, our soapy salty water solution in there. One more swirl to make sure we get all the salt in there. Add it in. And then once again, we're going to squeeze out all the air we can, first from the inside bag and then from the outside bag. So I pulled the inside bag out so that I can more easily Squeeze all of the air out of it as much as I possibly can. Seal the inside bag. Notice see how the soap solutions brought all this all the strawberry mush together. And then I'm gonna put it inside the other bag. And once again squeeze all the air out that I possibly can. And now we've got something that's good. You're gonna to want to give this about two minutes of gentle mushing. It's bad to have, this is already kind of a lot of foam, this is more than we should have, and you don't want to make a bad situation worse, so gently mush, just giving a good mix for a good couple minutes. And with those couple minutes, that'll be plenty of time for the soap to do its work, breaking down the cell membranes, for the salt to do its work, stabilizing the DNA, 
etc. All right, so be gentle, but keep it moving. And most importantly, give it a decent amount of time. All right, it's been a couple minutes. This is about ready to go. So we're going to do this a little bit different than the written procedure, at least at the time of filming says. Um, instead of using a test tube, we're going to actually reuse the same cup for our DNA extraction. So that means breaking this open, extracting the inner bag. This bag can actually be reused by a later group. Don't throw it away. That outer bag is perfectly reusable. So it's time to extract the DNA from here, and we're going to reuse the same cup again. Um, the way what we're going to do though is we don't want to use all this stuff. There's a lot of like the foam, the mush, the whatever that's going to get in the way of our DNA. We need to strain it out. So this is the reason why we have some cheesecloth. Now you can either have one of the group members hold the cheesecloth in place over the cup like this to make sure that it can serve as a filter, or potentially if one of these rubber bands is available, you can use a rubber band to hold the cheesecloth in place. So I will use the rubber band for holding the cheesecloth in place, more or less. All right, like so. Now, regardless of how you've got the cheesecloth held in place, whether it be by hand or with rubber band, what comes next is going to be the same. You need to get the contents of that cheesecloth, or rather, you need to use that cheesecloth to prevent some of the contents of this from going over. More specifically, you want to capture the liquid, but not all the gunk. So we're going to pour it gently very gently onto the cheesecloth. Slowly give the liquid a chance to go through the cheesecloth. All right, all that gunk, we want it to get stopped by the cheesecloth. We want to make sure the liquid has a chance to go through. Pour this out too fast and you're going to have a mess all over your tabletop. All right. There we go. That's that. This is now trash. Put this in the trash. This, on the other hand, there is still some liquid in there. So remember this spoon you used earlier? You're supposed to keep it with you because you're going to use it to push through some of the liquid that's in this excess gunk on top. All right. And then go rinse this off because you're not throwing this away. This is not to be thrown away. Or you can save it to be rinsed off later. I'm doing that in order to prevent making a sticky mess on the tabletop. All right. Now, once that's done, what you have is strawberry juice on the bottom, plus salt, plus soap, and then gunk on top. The gunk on top and the cheesecloth, it's trash. Throw it away. This... This is what you're going to do your experiment with. So off comes the burr band that I used for this particular case. Definitely don't want to throw that away. I want to keep that. This is trash. Goodbye. And then uh, the next step comes with this. Next step, now that you have this, the DNA is in there, but it is not yet visible. You need to make it turn visible using alcohol. More specifically, cold alcohol helps even more. So you're not going to use the big thing, of course. You're going to get use this to bring the alcohol to your station where you will do the extraction. Now, you're not going to fill this entire cup with alcohol. Actually, you're going to fill it about this much, okay, roughly up to the bottom of the letter O. So that means getting a reasonable amount of alcohol in there. So we're talking about a, somewhere between a third and halfway full for the cup. All right, so... This cup is about, actually that's more toward the top of the deal, but that's okay. So roughly halfway full is what we're looking at. And that's fine. So now you're going to pour this into here, but not direct. Tilt it sideways. 45 degree angle. Like this. That's a roughly 45 degree angle. And you're going to very gently let the alcohol flow down the side so that it forms a layer on top. Here we go. Notice the clear alcohol has formed a layer on top of the rest of the liquid. 
Okay, hopefully that's reasonably visible. Now, you see all that clear snot-looking stuff in there? That's the DNA. Pardon my shaking hands, but you get the rough idea. So this is the reason why one of the things you want to have is a toothpick, because that toothpick allows you to actually touch the DNA. It is that stuff that's kind of like, it's very stringy and sticky. It's clear and colorless. It's sitting on top right where the two layers meet, and it's going to trap a lot of the bubbles of gas that are dissolved in the alcohol, so that makes it even more visible, and that this is it, this is the DNA right here. Let me pull it up again for a side view. Yeah, see that? Looks like snot. That's DNA, all right. It tends to trap a lot of those little like, bubbles of gas. It's gas that's dissolved in the rubbing alcohol. So let's capture some. That's approximately what your DNA should look like. Let me uh, bring that up for a closer view. I get it's out of focus, but you get the rough idea. All right, and that's what your DNA looks like. Now, the kind of the interesting thing is, and this is a little difficult for me to show you this right now. Um, I'll pull the DNA off the stick. There's plenty more DNA in there. What you saw become visible here was just the stuff that's at the very top layer. So if you dig down in and kind of like pull it up, you'll actually get very small amounts of additional DNA coming up from it. I can see already just a little bit kind of hanging on there. So there's plenty more DNA to be had in there. If you can notice at the very end of the tip, there's some stringy clear stuff coming up. That's yet even more DNA that I just pulled up from a bottom layer. All right, so that's what your DNA looks like now, or rather the strawberry's DNA looks like. But anyway, at some point you'll be done with this. So just a quick note about cleanup. Um, some of the things you use right now are reusable and some are not. Like the toothpick is trash. It can go. I just tossed it in a trash can right now. However, the cups are all need to be reused. The spoon needs to be reused, which means they're going to get dumped down the drain, rinsed out, and set ready for the next class. Same thing. This is just alcohol. It's otherwise clean. Just leave it. Rinse this off. Make sure it's dry and ready for the next class. And then with that, you should be good with your DNA extraction. Again, though, just make sure this gets rinsed down the drain, and then your workstation, of course, should be wiped up and cleaned. All right, folks, that's it.